This is a subject that gets talked about a lot amongst, I'd say, pro-level, okay? This is a pro-level discussion. So if you don't follow, that's okay. You'll pick up on the stuff later one day. If you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to run into this conversation again. I guarantee it. So let me throw you a clip real quick. This is fair use, so we'll start from there. Check this out. Okay, how important are converters? Really important. Okay, <laughs> why? I, I don't know why. They just, you know, I, I just know that I can tell if, if I'm mixing something that wasn't um, recorded through Apogee converters. It's not so much just single channels or stereo, but when you get like 80 of them, I mean, I have 80 D to A's in my studio, so um, it. It just, you really, that, that's when you really start to hear it, when you get a whole bunch of them. And uh, I mean, I'm mixing on an analog console, so it makes a lot of difference to me. Sure. It's, it's just warmer sounding, it's more musical, clearer, and uh, it sounds closer. It just sounds kind of closer, you know? That's Bob Clear Mountain. If you don't know who that is, let me tell you. Bob Clear Mountain is the original mixer's mixer. That's the guy who's answering the question. He's the first guy that everybody started, basically the first guy who had the job title, mixer. You know, there may, everybody before who has mixed was generally a part of the project, whereas when Bob Clear Mountain came along, people would send him stuff to mix, they'd bring him stuff. He was the guy that they would hire to make stuff sound great. Now, there's other people that were doing it too, but this guy is the top of the top. There's a reason Rick Beato is like a kid in a candy store asking this guy questions. It's because Bob Clear Mountain is the guy. Now, let's assume what Bob's saying has some merit for a second. What he's saying, and now everybody keeps some things in mind. He also, he's married to the CEO of Apogee. So let's just throw that out there, but that doesn't affect, a guy like this is not gonna risk his whole reputation by saying things that aren't true. This is a true statement. He believes it 100%. I could see it in his eyes. What else? Let's talk about the fact that converters is something that a lot of people today like to dismiss as something that doesn't matter. You have to consider why they're dismissing it. One reason is because converters that are pro-level are very expensive. There's no way around that. But there's when you got a guy like, and it's also how, you, how you're working. There's a level of pro, right, that prefers to use analog gear and mix in a hybrid way. So they're in the box, but they're also out of the box. That's the hybrid concept. If you are one of those guys, like me, I'm mixing in the box, but I'm summing, I'm running through an analog mix chain, I'm using pro-level converters. There's a reason I like them as much as I do, and the, there's a reason I spent the money I spent on them. And there's a reason every single time when I think about what I need to buy next, a big part of me thinks, maybe I should spend it on more converters. And it sounds crazy, but let me explain why. Because my workflow dictates why this makes sense. Your workflow is gonna determine whether this makes sense or not. If you mix in the box only, like a lot of people do, meaning you're only in your DAW, you're only using DA to listen back through your speakers. DA is digital to analog conversion. You're only doing that so you can hear your mix, then this may not be the most important thing for you. But let's talk about all those other people who you know, have spent long enough doing this that they realize that there's a huge value in working out of the box and in the box, both. Because there's no getting around some things you need to do in the box, tuning, automating plugins, you know, some plugins that are just don't exist out of the box. You're going to have to do some stuff in the box no matter what. That's why hybrid is a thing. Very few people today will mix and do everything in the analog domain. Even Vance Powell, another guy who I admire, he's doing in the box and running through his SSL console. So he's, he's not only out of the box, he's both in and out. But then you get a guy like Andrew Sheps. Another you know, guy who knows what he's doing, he moved completely in the box. 
partly for ease of workflow, the fact that he could mix on a laptop in any environment, on a plane, using headphones, you know, and not be in a studio. There's ease of use here that comes with working in the box only. But in my opinion, and that's what this video is, I want to let you guys know, I give you my opinion. I'm not endorsed. I'm not sponsored by any of these companies I'm talking about. And I'm not married to Apogee CEO like Bob Clearmountain is. You know, I'm none of those things. So this is just my opinion. And I believe this wholeheartedly. And I'm about to show you a sound example, which makes me believe it. All right. Because it's not coming from nowhere. It's not buyer's remorse. I bought a bunch of stuff and now I have to justify it. It's not that at all. Because all this stuff has return policies. If it sucked, I'd have brought it back. If I didn't hear a difference, I'd have brought it back. But I do hear a difference. And that's why I think to myself, every time before I buy anything, I think to myself, is it worth buying that? Or should I just spend it on another, you know, couple converters? Because let me tell you, when you're working the way I do, which is, let me explain how that works, all right? And there's going to be a video on a plumbing setup soon because Dirk had asked for it. But until I do... Let me just explain what I have going on. When I get a session from anybody, I import all the files into Pro Tools, right? Then, in my setup, I route tracks to buses or just straight out of the DAW into a summing mixer or into outboard effects and then into the summing mixer, okay? From the summing mixer, what a summing mixer is, is a console except it's a console with very few knobs and buttons. Because let me explain this in a, like, this is critical here too. In my opinion, the future of audio is not having a huge giant console in front of you. It can't be. The reason is because whenever I see one of those consoles, like an SSL console in front of anyone, I know what people are doing with those things. That's what that is, is a giant template. It's a template because if you mix enough stuff, and this isn't true with everybody, but like a guy like Vance Powell, if you're in a big enough studio with interns and assistants and people galore that you trust, and they're always around you, then you may be able to do a mix on there, tweak every knob. And then when you think you're done, you print the song, somebody's got to notate every single knob. There's no way to just capture that with a photo and then have it come be able to just automatically flip back. So because of that, somebody's got to notate every single thing. Now picture this in the modern world. You got a mix you just delivered to somebody. They love it, but they want the harmony to come down or they want this to come down. Well, that's all well and good if they answer you in the next, you know, in real time when you send them the mix, they listen and they send it back. It's only good then. What if there's a couple days that go by? What if there's more people who got to chime in? What if any, any of these things? You know what happens? You move on to the next song immediately. The whole desk gets wiped of where it was and you change all the knobs to something else now what a nightmare that is when that those people the original people get back to you with a comment about they want mix is great but these things need to change well guess what you have to go back in and recall all the stuff to be able to have full control and tweakability if you don't do that you'll wind up doing things like just you know you have to con it's some sort of compromise you have to we can't make that louder because we just we don't have all the drums anymore now we print it even if you print stems of each thing you just print the drum stems okay you want the hi-hat louder you got to turn the whole high end up on everything because you don't have control of just the hi-hat you lost control of just the hi-hat when you printed the stem of the drums so even if you come up with a way to oh you just print stems with the console and then you can no no it's still not ultimate control and tweakability so in my mind, when I see a giant console in front of somebody, I see a bunch of things. I see you're going to need to hire a tech because these freaking things are going to go down. Pots are going to need to be cleaned. Everything's going to break. Assume that. And then you, somebody's got to fix it. So there's that problem. What about just the fact that you now have to notate every freaking knob? So when I think about it, I think that's a giant template taking up a lot of real estate, a lot of space that is literally has to be fixed. You can't touch the knobs because that's the only way to be able to move from song to song and not have to recall it.
You'd have to leave everything the way it's set. What a giant template, right? Isn't that what that is? It just becomes a giant template. It, it's not a usable thing where you would do what you would want to do. Like a guy like a Bob Clearmountain or any of these guys who's one, you tweak every knob to make the mix right. For every song, it's different. Every one. You wanted to be able to tweak it all. That's what makes that thing as great and valuable as it is. As soon as you take away the ability to tweak things because you have to leave it alone because you don't want to take the time, which is hours, mind you, to write it all down and bring it back up again? What are we talking about? At that point, it becomes what a crazy way to go into something like i'm going to use this giant template never touch it it's going to take up half my room it doesn't make any sense to me so in my opinion that's the past that's not the future all right because even on a mix bus chain if you have two or three things you still have to remember where they're set every time you have to notate any change you make so that for the next song when you start doing it you can get back to where you were before. So even on outboard gear that is gonna help your mix bus chain, you still have to recall everything every time or don't touch it. You're forced with these two options. You're always forced with these two options unless you're getting something that the computer will basically keep track of what it's doing. And when you shut it off and shut, turn it on, reload a different song, it automatically recalls it for you. And believe me when I tell you, there's not a lot of gear out there that does that. There's way much more gear in 2024, way many more pieces that don't do that than that do. All right. And people are still buying up stuff left, right and center that they'll have to notate themselves what it is to be able to recall it. There's apps like Patch Rat. I've tried them all. Trust me when I tell you, it's a pain. No matter how you look at it, recalling the stuff's a pain and trusting someone's going to get it right. That intern never cares about the work as much as you. That intern's job and career and future isn't on the line. That assistant doesn't, he doesn't, he may love what he's doing, but he's not you. He's not the owner. He's not the guy whose career's on the line. So what if he misses a knob? He may go a little quicker than you. He may not double, triple check. And then what? The mix always going to sound different. And that would eat me up. It would eat me up if I listen to it, with this. It sounds different than this. It sounds. Why does it keep sounding different? One of these knobs must be different. Then your brain is going crazy. Which knob is different? I think this was here. I think it was here. What a pain. Why go down that rabbit hole? So a summing mixer, in my opinion, makes sense because there's less things to touch, less things to mess with, but you still get the benefit of what a console does, which is basically take your channels in your DAW and spread them out. All right, so I use a summing mixer, and to me, that really helps the sound. My DA, which is digital to analog conversion, went down at one point, not that, I don't know, about a year ago, maybe a little less, something like that. And I had to mix a song or two in the box only. And if, if I wasn't sure before what the gear does in order to make things better, I'm sure now, because after that experience, I would never want to mix all in the box again. And I don't know how many people have tried it where they do in the box and then do out of the box and compare. I don't know how many people have done that. Maybe some, but the point is when I did it, wasn't even close, not even close. Mixing in the box sound, everything sounded smaller, tiny, tighter. And then as soon as I got the DA back working again and through, th just through everything I had going through the console with no other changes, it sounded way, way wider, bigger, better. So it just sounded thicker, more real, more like a record without doing anything else, right? So this leads into what I'm about to tell you, okay? The converters I was using, let me show you what they are. They're at, I'm, so check this out. Prior to, to about a year ago when everything went down, I had Apogee, uh, converters similar to clear mountain but i had the ones back in the day that people touted very highly and there's still stuff written about them here let me show what i'm even talking about over here so the apogee da16x all right now this thing came out like 20 years ago 18 years ago a long time ago but i just want you to see what's what people are talking about this is in 2022 all right in june of 22 a guy's asking June 2022, he's asking, should I get a, a DA-16X, which is what I had, 
right? And and I still have it. Um, and basically, people are responding, saying, I want you to see this, that, okay, here, those Apogee units are really excellent. Apogee hit a sweet spot with those. And when you look this stuff up, you know, on Gearspace or any of these other places, these converters are noted as being very good. They're very good converters. So, and, and a lot of people, like, as you read the thread here, and I'm not going to go through the whole thread, but the point is, people are saying so many great comments about these DA16Xs. They're, they're great sounding converters. Great, okay? But they're also, they don't sound like they're 20-year-old converters. They sound just as good. And, and this guy wound up buying this this Ferro-ish thing, Ferrofish Pulse 16, and he basically says he could barely tell the difference between the Apogee conversion and this Ferro-ish one. Barely. The Apogee DA16X. And that's, so the point is, what I want you guys to take from this, right, is converters make a huge difference. Don't argue with me that they don't. Listen to Bob Clearmountain. Argue with him if you want, all right? I mean, bottom line here is I really believe it. I'm about to show you a sound example, but... Before I do, let's just understand something else. During that time when everything went down, I decided maybe this is the time for me to upgrade my converters. So what I did, because I've got the DA16X, I've got like a Digi192 converter, like eight converters. Um, so that gave me 24 because what I've fe I'm feeding a 24 channel summing mixer. So I needed 24 channels of digital to analog conversion in order to feed it. So when that 16X went down, you know, the, the DA16X, I was like, damn, this sucks. What do I do now? I don't think it's a good idea to like buy the same thing again. Maybe I'll upgrade and get better converters. And I was always, I'm all over the forums and stuff, reading everything. Burl it was always mentioned. Every person I trusted in audio, was talking about how good the Burl converters were for a long time. Keep this in mind. I'm not sponsored. None of this stuff. This is my opinion. So I thought to myself, all right, now's my shot. I'm going to give this a chance. I'm going to buy some Burl stuff. And I got the, you know, a couple, 30 days or whatever to decide if it works. And if I like it, if there's no difference, I'm not going to spend the money because who would just want to throw away money, right? Crazy. These things are not cheap. So... I go out, I buy the Burl converters, and let me just tell you, when I got the DA16X working again, now in my sessions, I have the ability to use the Burl converters and also the DA16X converters. When I take a signal and run it through the DA16X, it's not as clear, not as in your face, not exactly what Clear Mountain is saying. It's not as present as thick, wide, whatever you want to call it, not as musical sounding as the burl. And this is a difference that makes me question what I'm going to buy every time I buy anything because I'd rather buy converters. And let me explain why. I have six converters that are burl, because that's all I could afford when I bought them, to feed my summing mixer. I have six stereo DA that are feeding the summing mixer. I have two Burl converters in addition, so I have eight total that are my monitoring, so I can monitor back. Because you gotta also realize, the better you can hear, the clearer you can hear, the better your mix decisions will be, all right? So if you're using converters that aren't as good, you're not hearing as well, and then you're not making the right mix decisions. You're making decisions based on this cluttered view that you're hearing, this cloudy view. Again, today converters are very good. You're going to see tons of people, including, you know, Produce Like a Pro channel. You'll find two different opinions on there, depending on where you watch. You got Warren. Talk, Warren is talking about how converters don't matter today. And then you got Mark Daniel Nelson in, you know, a, a year prior, approximately, talking about how if there's a fire... He's grabbing his JCF latte converters and running out of there because those things are amazing and his ATC speakers or whatever. But he's also, he's touted, he talks about these things a lot, how good those converters are and what they do, all right? 
so the point is he mark daniel nelson believes in converters and he's on the produce like a pro channel and then warren doesn't believe in him and he's the guy who runs the channel so the point is there are opposing points of view here and i'm letting everybody know these exist so you know let's talk about it in the comments but the critical thing in my opinion is can you hear a difference to you and what your setup is because if you're feeding a summing mixer then the converter that you use to go from digital to analog is very important because in my case when i use the burl i can hear everything so much more clearly and that's what i want to show you in a sound source like right now i just want to basically give you a sample of guitars running through the da16x and then simultaneously let's give you a sample you know of running through the burl and then you can really see what's going on all right so now all four of these are running through so these are this is like a distorted guitar right and then i doubled it with a different sound and then left and i doubled it with a different sound so we've got a nice stereo guitar spread distorted and we're going to hear what's going on with these converters all right so with the apogee this is what it sounds like That's the pearl. Now, if you don't have headphones on, throw them on, okay? But the other critical thing that Bob Clear Mountain mentioned is make sure that in our case, you see how I got the drums being sent out through burl one and two? That's that's fine, but in that then I shouldn't put these through burl one and two also because the idea here is the more converters you have, the more you could spread everything out. That's why Bob Clear Mountain's talking about eighty converters. You hear a difference. Well, I personally believe you hear a difference even on six, even on eight, even on ten, four. You'll hear a difference. So. The more you spread the audio out, the better. In other words, you don't want to push all your guitars, you know, or and your drums and your bass through two converters. You want to spread them out. Drums have their own converters. Bass has their own converters. Guitar have their own converters, okay? And if you're Bob Clear Mountain, you could put everything through its own set of conversion. That's the burl. This is the apogee. Notice the level difference, but it's also a thickness. It's just a little bit of thickness is the difference. You ready? Now I'm gonna go back to the pearl. Now what you'll notice is they just sound clearer, just like Bob was saying. It's just a clarity, a transparency, a closeness. Now, if you don't hear it, throw on headphones. You gotta listen on decent speakers. This is subtle. I'm not saying it's night and day, but this subtleness means that now your stuff is gonna be more present, more clear, more in your face, the way you're used to hearing the best stuff you listen to. That's why it's so good. I'm not saying this is the only reason, but it's a part of it. And if you just neglect this part of it completely, that's not good. You need to always acknowledge what's real. So, and keep also keep in mind, as I switch these, the, it, it almost has to figure out the delay compensation and stuff. So it sounds a little weird as it's changing. Apogee. Now, back to the pearl. Okay, so I don't know if you guys hear what I'm saying or not, but I hear what I'm saying, all right? So, this is the Apogee. This is the Burl, all right? Now, keeps another thing in mind. I'm using the Burl converters with a transformer on them. 
I'm not using the Burl converters that's just the DA with the IC chips. I'm actually using the ones with the converters on them, not the converters, the transformers on them. Because my, because transformers are in the sound that we love. The transformers are all through a, an SSL console. They're through a Neve console. When people mix through those, they're getting transformers all over the place. They're also getting tape with transformers on it. All right, they're getting, like if you're using Thinking Analog World and how stuff used to sound. So that transformer filled essence is part of what makes stuff sound great. And by adding the transformer to the converters, I think they sound way better than without it. But if I were to take it off, there's still a difference. It's just a little more subtle of a difference. I'll take them off so you can hear the difference. Get the transformers in. This is without, without the transformers. This is with the transformers. This is without the transformers. This is with the transformers. So what I'm saying, is I hear a difference, especially with the transformers. So I'm not even saying that, I don't know what the DA Burl makes without this sounds like. All I know is what it sounds like without the transformers in, and I imagine that's pretty close to what the DA sounds like without the transformers on it. But in my opinion, I'm doing this, the transformers is part of the reason I love it. I want that thicker sound. I want that transformer sound to run and feed my summing mixer, which also has a transformer in it to get more transformer action happening when it feeds everything through that to then go out through my mix bus chain, which also has transformers in it. So what you're basically missing when you're, mix when you're mixing only in the box is this lack of transformers all over the place. You're just missing that, really. And in my opinion, it really helps. It really, really helps. So I don't want to make this too long, but I also want to show you what it sounds like without the transformers back and forth, just so you can hear that. So this is, in other words, I'm going to use the AD, I'm sorry, the DA16X. And keep this in mind, this is all mixing out of the this is the hybrid way if you're recording i believe even more wholeheartedly that the converters on the front end have being transformer filled and very good they make a huge difference on what you're recording how it sounds i really believe that but as but on the back end it really also makes a difference there's just no getting around it okay so this is without the transformers in I'm going to play it for you with the Burl, and then I'm going to actually flip to the Apogee, and you'll hear what the, co the comparison is. Because, again, this, these are great Apogee converters. Just look it up. Ap Apogee DA16X. They sound awesome. People tout them very highly. So check this out. Even 20 years later, they do. Now listen. This is Burl, no transformers. This is Apogee. The Apogee DA16X. Burl with no transformers. I still hear a difference. I still hear a difference. So, in my opinion, there is a difference. Even without the transformers in, there's a clarity. There's less of a cover. So there's just less to do to make it sound good. And this is the thing that I think a lot of people, they want to ignore it. They want to fight against it like it's the plague. They don't want to believe that they have to spend money to make things sound good. But I hate to say it, I firmly believe that that is the case to a certain degree. Because there's no cheap converters that do this. Not this. You know, so, and, you know, I'm sure people are going to disagree. They're going to, any way to avoid spending money, people will obviously be on board with. But I wouldn't throw the money away. So, in my opinion, 
This makes a, such a difference to my ear. Even if it's subtle, it adds up. It all adds up. And if I'm trying to make stuff sound as great as I can possibly make it, this is a part of my rig for a reason. All right? So I'd love to hear what you guys think. I want to hear the comments. I want to know what you guys are doing. And, you know, obviously there's going to be a lot of, uh, there's going to be opposing viewpoints all over the place. And I want to hear that. So, you know, let's, let's talk about it. You guys got this. All right. Keep this in mind. If you don't mix out of the box, it's less important. If you're recording stuff, I would say that most interfaces today, if you can get a, like a great sounding, you know, Neve mic pre or Neve DI or something, you're going to get a lot out of that that'll make your sound amazing, much better than without that. So like the front end, a mic preamp is really helpful, very critical. Um, and the converters are also critical. So there's a reason why people spend the money they spend on heavy duty, great pro level converters. There's a reason. All right. There's just stuff you get in there that you don't get when you don't spend that kind of money. And in my opinion, it's very helpful to make the sound great. So I hope you guys like the video. Please hit that like and subscribe button if you did. Throw a transformer on the like button. Really helps. And uh, I might link to another video up top that has something to do with other stuff like this. But this is such a pro-level conversation that if it's over your head, don't worry. You'll get here soon one day and then you'll be right alongside it because as you start upgrading your chain, you're going to say to yourself, what am I missing? What do I need to sound a little better? And you heard it from Bob Clearmountain. Rick Beato asked him, why do you think Rick asked this question? He had a limited time to ask questions and he asked, are the converters important? Why do you think he did that? Because it's on his mind. Because he's an extreme pro. And that's what's on our minds, is how to get every edge we can get. You guys got this. Evan Jaffe, Custom Cut Studios. Talk to you guys soon in the next one.